All right, Dan. You ready? ready? I am ready. I've been five. ready. High five. five. This is going to be the biggest episode. Is it? Maybe. Biggest? Yeah, I think you're right. All right. Brick Maniacs, it's time for another episode of Brick Mania TV. Right, this is going to be the biggest episode, literally. I guess, right, okay. You have, everybody right. has to get a new monitor cool. just to watch this. All right, episode. today, it's look super at this high, thing. super, super high definition. What this, is this thing? What is this monster? This is the PT 109. It's such so, a huge ship. Not a ship? It's a boat. It's yes. a boat. Technically, okay. it's a boat. I don't, I don't know what, where boat ends and ship starts in the Navy. But right here. They consider this a boat. It's a, cool. like a gunboat, motor torpedo boat. Basically. So this is the PT-109, the famous PT-109. Right. It's not just any boat. So, right. I mean, it is any boat. This is, this is an 80-foot Elko uh, motor torpedo boat yep. from World War II. This is the most numerous type of boat made during World War II, most uh, right. numerous torpedo boat, patrol boat. Um, but this one is particularly famous because we mm -hmm. modeled it, or I modeled it, after PT-109. Yes. Uh, this was made famous because it was piloted or commanded by uh, John F. Kennedy. John, the John F. Kennedy. Yeah, future president of the United States at that point. We have this guy represented right here, right? Right, right. So we can just dive okay, right in. Yeah. Should we just dive into some of the details? Yeah, uh, where do we even start with this thing? Well, well let's, let's just, just bounce around yeah. and, 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 and like at our normal... Uh, Unstructured so Well, let's get a bit more history. First. Sure. Well, okay. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> PT-109. <clears throat> so let's let's start with the PT boats. It's yes. a motor torpedo boat. The idea being that uh, a small craft could yeah. launch torpedoes uh, against a battleship or a big capital ship. Yeah. So the the idea of having a fast patrol boat that could s speed up to the fleet and uh, um, you know, sneak in using stealth, get close to the enemy battle fleet, right. whittle down the numbers by launching torpedoes at them. Um, they're supposed to be, they don't have armor, they're made out of wood. They're supposed to use their agility and speed as their defense. So that sounds like a really safe job for these ships. It's semi-suicidal. <laughs> um, it was a real, when, oh when you joined God. the PT boat service, yeah. you, were, you were basically like in this glamorous high risk okay. job, which is exactly why somebody like a young dashing future politician like uh -huh. uh, John F. Kennedy Very would be attracted move. to, yeah, to yeah. Uh, the glamorous life of the, uh, the motor torpedo boats, the PT boats. Um, so fast forward World War II a little mm -hmm. bit into the war, we're in 1942, uh, the Battle of Guadalcanal is raging right. in the Solomon Islands and uh, it's a, basically a life or death struggle. We're, we're, we're thousands of miles away from the United States, thousands of miles away, thousands of miles away from Japan. Both armies are, you know, both countries are locked in combat on this tiny little island. Japan is sending reinforcements right. down from Tokyo. They call it the Tokyo Express, and the Americans are throwing whatever they have in their way. So at night, um, down comes the Japanese ships. Out go the uh, the American patrol boats right. try to intercept them. So uh, one night, 1942, uh, during the Battle of Guadalcanal. Mm -hmm. Um, PT-109 was on a patrol uh, with, I think, five or ten other patrol boats, right. and um, just it was it was idling. They, you know, basically what happens is you, these patrol boats go through the water, they leave a huge wake, and they disturb all the the phosphorescence, and they can be seen from the aircraft. So they heard an airplane, stopped the boat, I see. Um, and while they were they were idling, basically waiting for Japanese ships to show up, stuff like that. One showed up. Right in the midships of the, the PT-109, saw it in half, ship blew up. So that was totally accidental on the Japanese. It's speculated. Nobody's ever <laughs> said for sure. The, you know, it turns out that after the war, the, the, the captain of the, the destroyer, the Amagari, right. um, became friends with, with John F. Kennedy. So he went out, he sought out. Sorry uh, about your boat. Yeah. <laughs> but they never, they never like, um, That's I, I don't think there was ever an official account saying that he did it on purpose. Of course, when you're when you saw an enemy ship in half, like, oh yeah, I meant to do that. Totally, meant to do that. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. So, the, but the the PT one hundred and nine blew up right yep. in the midship where it hit. There is thousands of gallons of, of hundred octane aviation fuel. Right. This is like a thoroughbred. This is this this ship. You could water ski. You could have a hundred water skiers towed behind this thing. Um, so it's three ginormous racing engines, twelve cylinder like race car engines in this thing. It goes super fast. But to power it, you have this super volatile, super flammable, 100 octane. So gasoline. we have a wooden boat 
with four torpedoes and motorboat engines and then Right, it's and filled to the brim with armament. You've got machine guns, you've got, in this case, they had a 37 <laughs> millimeter uh, anti-tank gun. It's a the pretty awesome board. boat. <laughs> right, right, it's cool. I mean, it's, if you're like a, yeah. a testosterone junkie or adrenaline junkie or both, uh, this would be the, the job to have. That's awesome, that's you know? awesome. But yeah, the, the boat was torn in two. Mm -hmm. um, PT-109, uh, it, it, it broke in half. Two people died instantly. They, right. could, or they don't know. Uh, the others, 13 crew members on board, Two disappeared in, in the uh, explosion. Yep. The other boats that are around are like, oh crap, let's get out of here. <laughs> that thing just got blown up. And yep. they, they hightailed it out of there, never went back and looked. This is like a real controversial thing that right. the, the commander of the, the, the squadron never ordered them to go back and look. Um, I think actually ordered them to leave right. the area and then not bother to go back the next day or the next day. They just assumed that everybody died. Right. Uh, in reality, 11 of them survived. Some of them were badly burned, yeah. badly injured. Um, they managed to um, basically all get together and um, John F. Kennedy during his course of action, he, he, he led them to an island, island to island, hiding from the Japanese during the day, foraging for food, um, and you know at night um, John F. Kennedy would swim out into the uh, area where the patrols would normally be, the American right. patrol boats came, no, no patrols ever came through, um, and after six days they were finally able to hook up with uh, native Solomon Island, native coast watchers who were working for the Australian military. Right. Um, uh, contacted those guys, actually met up with them, and uh, arranged for the two of the native, I guess they're scouts, right. to basically paddle their canoes all the way back to the American base, which was right. like 40 miles away through all the Japanese controlled territory. They carved a help message into a coconut. Right, they had two messages. One was yeah. done on a piece of paper and one was done on a coconut. Okay. So they had two separate messages in case they got stopped by the Japanese, they could, the, the paper message could be right. could be eaten or destroyed and the coconut could be you know, scribbled out or whatever. So yeah, they carved a message. Kennedy carved a message on the coconut and they wrote a handwritten message too yeah. as well. They got it back to the American base and eventually um, they came and rescued the, uh, That's the, a crazy the, the, the stranded crew, the PT-109, yeah. That's crazy. So that was famous, that, I mean that was world famous, that was yeah. like in Reader's Digest and Joseph P. Kennedy, um, who was John F. Kennedy's dad, was a real big rich media guy and of course he made sure everybody knew that his son was a war hero now yeah. and all this other, you know, it rest is history, yeah, the rest literally. Is, yes, exactly. <laughs> I don't need to, I don't need to cool. keep going further cool. and further in that story. All right, digging deeper, let's, uh, maybe let's start with the armaments on this thing. Okay, well, uh, torpedo boat is torpedo. obviously armed with torpedoes. Yes. In this case we have four torpedo tubes. Yeah. Um, each one would contain a torpedo and the theory being, you would you would suicidally pilot the craft very very close. Yeah, to how an close enemy would you ship. have to get with? To get well, with these torpedoes weren't very good. You had to get really close. I'm not. Um, so like too close. The the Japanese had what they called the long lance torpedo. Yeah. It was legendary. It didn't leave any wake in the water. They could launch it in Tokyo. It would hit a ship in, in San Francisco Bay, and. By comparison, these guys basically had to go into Tokyo Harbor to, to hit something yeah. in Tokyo Harbor. Um, I mean, that's an exaggeration, of course, but um, the American torpedoes were uh, very inferior. Mm -hmm. the, the Americans had an arrogant uh, attitude that they didn't really take the torpedo boat seriously, so and, or the torpedo or the submarine or anything that wasn't a battleship yeah. sort of got uh, less funding, less testing, yeah. and so they weren't really well thought out. The American torpedoes were, were, were kind of dogs, and then they had all kinds of defects in them. Uh -huh. So even if you did get close enough and you survived uh, approaching a Japanese ship bristling with anti-torpedo boat guns, <laughs> which the Americans didn't do either, right. um, the, you, if you didn't get blown out of the water, you launch your torpedoes. Um, a lot of times with this particular torpedo tube, yeah. um, so that you have a tube, torpedoes packed in grease inside this tube and then you launch it with a uh, powder charge yep so inside back here there's a black powder charge you push a button or if that didn't work you got out a hammer and you you, you manually ignited it with the with the detonator sounds <laughs> super sick. right yeah. and then, so this this tube packed with grease um, which you've never even tested your torpedoes because you were never getting given a budget to do a test firing with sure um, if you're lucky the torpedo goes and goes into the water, the minimum that's going to happen is going to be an enormous flash for your black powder going yep. off, giving your position away, especially at night, yep. and your torpedo will go on and, and, and miss the ship because they sucked. Um, <laughs> not that they, for lack of trying, the guys tried their best, but you know, there's, yeah. there's very few recorded really? actual sinkings of anything significant by a torpedo boat until later in the war. Right. Um, 
So, but then the worst case scenario is the torpedo wouldn't eject out of the torpedo tube. It would just. And so now you have a, a live torpedo. You have a live torpedo in there. It's it's, it's com powered by compressed air. A certain number of revolutions of the, the 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 spinner arms the torpedo. So now you've got this armed torpedo yep. in your tube. And, may, and in the worst possible scenario, your torpedo tube's on fire yeah, because of the, the powder grease. charge ignited the grease. So any one of those possible combinations, and there's, there's horror stories about these things. And these guys are super brave, super yeah. <laughs> are dumb or something. You know. I guess Combination. Pa patriotic and, yeah, and, and whatever. You know, it's 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 when you're in wartime and you do things that you are do crazy things, yeah. And you do what you're asked to do and, and <laughs> hope for the best. Hope somebody knows what they're yeah. doing. Um, so that's a torpedo. Yeah. This this particular boat had two. Um, I guess they're turrets right. um, of 50 caliber machine guns. They're twin 50 cals, and these are aircraft machine guns. Right. So they're actually a little bit. They're so not going to go like straight up and down, pretty much, right? Right, right. Yeah, I can, you can take the figure out. Yeah, and, it, can, and it goes around. You can spin it around. It's just easier not to not right. to deal with the figures on it. The easiest well, way to pose. spin that around is you would just unclip it. Right, right. Clip it on. But in, in the real world, that's on a, a right. on a chase. You just kind of lean into the turret. It'll it'll rotate. Um, these are actually belt fed machine guns. I just. Um, for the sake of using the the, the can the, the 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 cans that come with the M2HBs, yeah. I just stuck those on there. Um, we did have Will did make us some super sweet aircraft barrels. Um, these were yeah. from another project that never that never came to fruition. So we were lucky enough to have uh, uh, access to these these sweet uh, M2 um, aircraft uh, machine yeah. gun barrels. Like the uh, the jackets on the side of them, right? They yeah, yeah, they're, they're air cooled. Yeah, it's cool. These are a little bit more significant. Yeah. So you have the M2HB body, but you have a, a the actual aircraft barrels. Cool. Um, you also this particular. I boat, love that thing on the front. <laughs> yeah. So, so basically, during the course of this campaign, they were trying to sink essentially Japanese. You know, they had all these destroyers. They had all these big ships going yep. to Guadalcanal to resupply the troops there, but they also sent a lot of supplies on barges, especially between the different islands that the Japanese held. Yeah. And the barges were basically like an armored barge. Mm -hmm. And the 50 cals couldn't do anything against them because the, the sides of the barges were too heavy. Right. And there's no explosive shell or anything at this. Torpedoes were just torpedoes. They right. go under the barge. Even if they got close to the barge, the chance of them malfunctioning seemed to be. Right. <laughs> See, they, you know, I, I don't think anybody was admitting it out loud, but they didn't work. Um, and the uh, so they, what they did is they, they borrowed a 37 millimeter anti tank gun from the army, and just lashed it to the deck. <laughs> so this was like a stop. It's quite literally like on wooden planks, right? Yeah, yeah. For this case, <laughs> this was an experiment. So this is actually kind of a cool. You yeah. know, not only is it PT 109 cool for you know the survival story and, and, and all this other stuff. Yeah. But they actually were one of the first to actually have this gun on here. Right. And if you look at later PT boats, they actually replaced this with a deck mounted. Uh, a 37 bit. millimeter gun where a guy would stand there with the automatic cannon. Right. They took it out of an Air Cobra airplane. Oh, um, sweet. And stuck it on the deck. Yeah. And it's really cool. It's like made by Oldsmobile. It's like all this nice. kind of cool story. So that that would have been, <laughs> in later models of this, that would have been perfect. Right. So this, this is this is a, a, a class 103 class torpedo boat. Yeah. Um, uh, most of the Elkos were of that class. Okay. Um, and they later, they just kept adding adding more army. They eventually added these big five inch rocket launcher projector things off the oh, front. Cool. So. They turn these from torpedo boats into gunboats, basically. Yeah. They, they just go barge hunting and they could just destroy, you know. Lo, uh, woe is the Japanese troops on the shore, too, that would be caught out in the open by one of these things. Right. This is, you got, you have four machine guns, 37 millimeter gun, and you have a 20 millimeter on the back. Yeah. They later replace that 20 millimeter with the, with the Bofors 40 millimeter. So this, they really turn these things into heavy armament. Yeah. Um, some motor torpedo boats actually had their torpedo tubes removed and had, um, uh, depth charges added to yeah. so they could be patrol boats in like a harbor against submarines and stuff cool. like that um, You only have like four depth charges, so you better get it right the first time. Cool. That's the armament of this thing, right? So, yeah, maybe like delve into the kit here itself. Sure. Well, this yeah. is a kit. This is the, this is the biggest brick mania kit since Years the castle era, right? Right. Yeah, we haven't built anything or any released anything in quite this ages. big yeah, back in Brickmania's dark ages, we were making <laughs> castles. Um, so this is forty-one hundred something pieces. Yep. Uh, it's just it keeps creeping up in, in part count. Thirteen minifigures. So we have the whole crew of, of PT one hundred nine. Yep. Thirteen minifigures, fourteen hundred, forty-one hundred pieces. Yeah. Um, it weighs. I don't know what does it weigh. Like five pounds. It's super heavy. Um, you get this sweet stand. Yep. I mean, I didn't know how extensive the uh, arrangements for the PT boat are. So I, I actually went and bought a bunch of plans and blueprints. And, yep. Um, found some, some cool stuff online and I was able to buy. So this is like actually PT-109's deck layout. 
Um, this stuff is all freely available, it's just hard to find. Yeah. Um, so I was able to figure out how this thing's built, what goes under the deck, everything. Yep. So this is built true to the um, the way a PT bone, right. especially this one, because it's so well documented, um, is, is laid out. So we yeah. can go over it real quick. Real quick, yeah. Real quick, we'll <laughs> go over it. So there is a completely de in detailed interior. I'm just going to start pulling yeah. off pieces. I, I, I built this to come apart so you could... You know, yeah, it's really cool, it. like the, the, the posability of everything. You have these little studs kind of exposed to here and right. there in and, the deck. And, and the studs, there are studs where you can pose people. A lot mm. of these studs actually are for different things. So there's a hole here, there's a hole in the back. That's so you can, at different times, you can move the, they'll have the flags at different it's areas. It's just everything, that's cool. So you can put the flags where it's supposed to go. There's supposed to be a, a little ensign. You get one basically without the stars. So we printed this this, this cool, it's it's like on fabric paper. It's a fa yeah, fabric paper and then we laser printed. Um, that's digitally engine. printed, it's it's cool. It, we could, you could get it wet, it mm -hmm. won't run like yep. some of our other <laughs> cloth accoutrements that have come with Brick Mania stuff. In the past. Yeah, it's a new era. In the past, it's a new era. Um, so that's kind of unique. Yeah. We, we printed it. It's actually double-sided, and that was the, the magic of our production people were able yeah. to make that thing that's happen. That's cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm amazed. <laughs> All right, she's, so the, she's over there right now. <laughs> so okay, <laughs> smiling. <laughs> yes. So we were able to get that. That's cool. Uh, that was Amanda, by the way. We'll, mm -hmm. we'll put a name to the. The, the people behind the scenes here. So here, I'll, I'll start taking it apart. Yes. So we have the deck house. This is basically the chart room right here. You could take off this piece of the chart house. So the chart house itself, so you can get it off without destroying everything. That whole thing, this whole thing comes off as a unit. So in real life, that would eject off and then turn into a little... Yeah, this is a skate pod. <laughs> <laughs> Only officers are allowed in the <laughs> skate pod, right? <laughs> so that comes off. You have, this is this is called the day, the day, the day house, day, something like that. I don't know. Dave room, I guess. I don't know what they call it. Day cabin. It's a boat. Day it's cabin. a cabin. Yeah. Nice. So this comes out, and this is just like it's it's basically um, an extra room on the an extra cabin on the yeah. boat that for multi-purpose things. If injured, that turns into a sick bay. If there's injured people, there's actually a hatch in the back that opens yep. up that they can take stretchers in and out. Hatch on the roof. Ev there's hatches everywhere on this mm -hmm. boat. So you have a hatch on the roof of that. You got a hatch down here that goes down below decks. Hatch, 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 hatch. So we'll take out the speaking of hatches, we'll just pull the whole entire engine room hatch off. So this, in real life, this does come off as a unit. This is the actual hatch for regular everyday yep. access. But you have the, the engine room roof comes off so they can have access to the engine. And on this boat, uh, here, I'll pull this off, I have it so you can, you can get into the compartments that way. But really, if you wanna see what's inside, you have to pull the whole thing apart. Four, four tiles, this is magic of Lego. Four tiles hold this whole thing together. I have to take a few pieces off to make this, this work properly. But, oh, there's a little shelf that's gonna come off here, I forgot. And that little shelf. That one little shelf, you know, these little details. It's cool to put the details on it, but they sure make it complicated. It, yeah, but you, ma you made it so it, it does come apart fairly simply. Right? right, so you take the whole entire deck off as one unit. Um, you actually build that as one unit too, so. I'll just, I'll just tilt this over, I'm gonna lose all the bananas, but um, so you can see inside so all the different compartments. accurately detailed interior. As close as I could get. I mean, yeah. there's there's certain things, you know, the, the Lego people don't exactly lend themselves to, uh, um, they're like kind of an awkward shape. I don't know, yeah. <laughs> a six foot so. tall, four foot wide person, I don't know. Well, it's more like a four foot tall and two feet wide. Yeah. <laughs> but we have, you know, the different rooms in here, I guess we could go over them real quick. Sure. Um, uh, in the back is the engine room, of course, and we did detail. We did a lot of printing for this thing. This is my first time seeing uh, all the printed tiles. So there is a lot of, of there, yeah, the, yeah. There's there's a there's an engine, and it has. They're built these these are Packard Motor Car Company built these really cool aluminum twelve cylinder engines for aircraft. Yeah. But you know the Navy's like well, we need those for yeah. our, our torpedo boats. You have a little fifty cal. We have ammo boxes that we printed. You may have remember these from the Wemmick. These yep. are the same. It's the same gun. Same same ammo box. So um, there are six of those in there, right? Yeah, there's six of those. There, there's a whole storage room in the back. This is called the lazarette. All these, I learned all these nautical terms. Lazarette, day cabin, uh, chart room, uh, the galley down here. We have a galley, which is fully detailed. It's got the yeah. navy beans in there. Right, we did some navy beans, but of course we had to print some, <laughs> some, some funky stuff. Some custom printing. So we, we have navy, navy beans. beans. I'll try to hold my hand steady <laughs> so you can focus on this. <laughs> it's attention to detail here. Um, we have some pineapples in there. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff. So there's there's a there's a spot in the, there for the, the, the you know in the engine room or the the guy. There, you have to man, there's a guy that sits on the engine basically and controls all the yes. the clutches and gears. Um, we did some other funky. We did some 
these duffel bags, basically like a sea bag. And that's with the texture printed ink. Yeah, it's cool. It actually is kind of. I think of, we'll be using that a few, a few I times. I move my road. fingers out of the way, you might be able to see that a little better. But we use it on here. Yeah, it's on here. It's going to be on a, it's feature, a, yeah, a few tanks. A bit of an update of the Lego had a duffel bag on some <coughs> old Star Wars set. Right. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it, is it Star Wars? I don't know if, what it was. It Star Wars? I don't know. Some, some, something cool that we've expropriated for yeah. our own purposes. <laughs> um, so, like, basically, let's go through this. Lazarette, it's basically storage, yep. ammunition, extra anchors, stuff like that, extra props. Um, engine room, three Packard engines. There's a, there's a backup generator. Um, you come forward, you have the day cabin. Each these, This void that's right here is actually where the fuel tanks are. So you, you know, if you're in the day cabin, you're pretty much toast if those fuel tanks go up. Um, you get sawn in half by a Japanese sub, uh, destroyer. Um, basically, we have the, uh, the wardroom. It's the officer's wardroom. Yep. You have the storage area. It's kind of in later boats. This was taken over by a radar uh, station. Yep. Um, our radio equipment and stuff. The galley. This is the crew quarters. Up here's the crew head, uh, toilet, uh, and then you have two officers' quarters, and in the middle there's the officers' head. So and this is this is actually the floor of the chart room. Oh, cool. So those are that's the interior of the of the boat. Try to detail everything as as well as we could. I mean it's. You're cramming everything into such a small right. space. Just like the real boat, there's not a whole lot you can do. Right. But it is fully detailed. I mean, that's kind of, there's the, right in here is like a lot of the detail in the boat. You have to actually take it apart right. to see it. <laughs> you can actually take these sides off um, and see the boat that way. So there it is with the side, side removed. I did forget to take a few pieces off that would have uh, expedited that <laughs> whole removal process. So there you have the boat with the, it's basically broken down to its components. Yes. Um, the bottom does come off, so you can display this. You can take the bottom of yeah. the hull off and display it as a waterline model. Um, it's a little more, you know, basically you just keep on stripping it down. But then if you put it back together without the bottom, put the sides back on, yeah. it'll sit right on the table. The floor, the, the floors, I guess the deck will right. stay on the. Well, you know. Yeah, you can have this thing on display with just the whole side open. Oops. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's cool. Yeah, so that's kind of an interesting feature. So I'm not going to attempt to put this back together, but maybe we could do a, well, for, nah. time lapse. Nah. <laughs> it's really hard to build reaching oh, over. No. So, so that's it. Let's talk about the mini. Cool. All right. So our first figure is the JFK, right? The CO. He's wearing the CO, so the commanding officer. Yep. And uh, kind of pull out all the stops with this. Um, Full printing on all of the, like, how many crewmen? What do we got in here? We have 13. 13 fully 13 printed right. guys. Mo the majority of them are like this guy here. Yes. He's a, he's a, you know, basically your standard yeah. sailor. So this is a standard sailor. Um, he's wearing the K-Pak life vest. Did I say that right, K-Pak? I think so. Cool. Um, and that's got that textured ink on that. I don't know if you can get that with the camera. Um, we did a little bit extra ink on the uh, collar part of that life vest, which is really popular. Well, not out. only that, we, we actually, you know, the, we're pushing the envelope what we can do with printing. We right. really fine-tuned our, our printer, so you have We're almost using it more like a 3D printer at this point. Right, you've, you have texture, so the, the it's hard to, I don't know if it'll show up on the camera, but you have sort of a denim print on the legs, you have yeah. a denim pattern. The belt, everything that you know, we can to like sort of uh, spiffy this up. So we we fine tune it. So it's a little bit. We're able to get it a little bit sharper than yeah. we have. Um, it's a printed head too. So these are we're not, we're not just doing. So this is our first test at. I um, got a neck strap for the helmet on here. Right. Um, that's my first go at it. We'll you know continually improve on it, but it's it's cool. It's a good first right. Try. So this is the sort of the standard you're going to see from our figures in the future. And we we have 13 guys on this boat, and, and it's a lot of unique ones. Um, so next up is would just be like an interior crewman. Um, he's got the inside. I'm assuming it's a lot warmer down there with all the engines going. Right, right. So he's kind of. So he's got he's got. Uh, I think this is the first minifigure with uh, armpit stains. <laughs> <laughs> so he's below deck. You get so you have your crewman down below. Got the cuff jeans uh, with that cool denim texture on there. Is, is it my understanding that every every minifig in this boat comes with a helmet? I'm not sure. Okay, I don't. I don't, I don't know. know. So, uh, we'll see. Yeah. So next up, next I, up, I we, think that was part of the program. This is the guy that would be sitting on top of those those engines in that lovely tropical. Right. Weather. There's a lot of there's a lot of pictures you could you could you could Google it um, uh, and find guys sitting. They're basically yeah. there's a station um, down below deck where they have to you know if they're, they they need to they need to change the, right. the, the the direction of the of the props or the engines. They, some guy actually has to shift those engines. It's not like. A car where you hit the gas and you go. Right. You pull the arm on the throttle, and somebody down below deck gets a signal, and then they have the throttle down below deck. 
So it's not automatic like A little bit of a delay there. Yeah, there is a linkage, I think, that they, 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 they added, but uh, um, for fine-tuning it, sure. they have to. Cool. They, they'll have a guy down there sitting on that so engine. that's this guy's working job. Working the clutches and the, and the transmission. It sounds like a really fun job. <laughs> right, well, it has to be done. You, um, so your, your basic job, you, on this boat, you're either a commanding officer, a gunner, or a motor machinist right. mate, because it took a bunch of guys to, to, to keep these boats in, in, in fine, you know, proper uh, fighting trim. Right. Um, other detail on this guy, he's got a texture printed uh, watch, and that's just the, I'm blanking on the name of it, but it's just the standard issue watch for Mil the U.S. military. Right. Um, you know he's missing? He needs a battleship tattooed across his chest. <laughs> Maybe a PT one. A lower back tattoo. Back yeah, tramp stamp. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have um, two more uh, just guys. Blue jackets, I call them just standard blue jacket printing from this. Yeah. So different faces. We're trying out different stuff. Um, yeah, they're, they're grease stains on that guy. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's, those aren't standard issue grease stains, are they? No. Yeah. So that's those are just some <laughs> of the cool figures. You do get 13 figures in all. Most of them are like this guy. As I say, he's he's going to be your standard crewman up on the deck. Uh, fighting for his country. It's cool stuff. I, I guess I don't know where to end on this. What what else do we got here? Well, you see this lovely uh, real life uh, display of blown up, destroyed PT-109, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Should we end on a time lapse of you putting this thing back together? But, yeah. I should tell you the story about this thing going through customs. Or not <laughs> oh, yeah. through customs, through the airport. Yeah, you took this thing on the airport. <laughs> so I, <laughs> this was brought out to the San Jose Comic Con so I could work on the, the, the prototype make, making model. the instructions, right? right? And they made me put it through the conveyor belt into the, <laughs> through security. And I had it wrapped in a plastic bag and I stuck it on the belt. That doesn't look suspicious at all. Well, you could see exactly the guys. The guy at TSA guys. Well, oh, that's really cool. Did you make? <laughs> yeah. You know, they were they were super infatuated with it. But then I got to the part where I had to go through the X-ray machine, and, and yeah. there was some sort of hold up at the X-ray, and they kept shoving bags through the conveyor belt um, behind it. Yeah, to, to get X-rayed separately. So I'm watching. Here goes my ship. I see it disappear into the into the, the X-ray, and I'm waiting my turn to get get you know X-rayed. Get through the other side. There's a whole backup of suitcases because they had waited, made everybody wait so long that the entire conveyor belt past where I was was full of suitcases and they were still trying to conveyor belt more through. So the boat was stuck in the chute sideways. Imagine, here's the edges of the chute and the boat's rolling oh. like this because oh. the conveyor belt's moving and I could see pieces falling off. At least it was in a bag. No. And it, it survived about you know 20 laptops and computers and boots and, and trays just smashing <laughs> into it, repeatedly smashed. Because I kept, I don't know, I, I, is that like everybody's reaction when something's stuck? Let's just try to jam more things into it. So I got to watch it. I plucked it out. Of, I was able to reach into the, the conveyor belt and pluck it out. But uh, I, I thought it was goner, but it, it survived. The hull didn't break or anything. So this thing is sturdy. That's cool. Um, you know, spite you have some. I know you had a little fragile, bit of a hold up fragile bits on the back here, but yeah. Yeah, I knew you had a bit of a hold up at the TSA, but I didn't realize that that was. I, I assumed that they were just like, it, checking it, it out or something. You, I couldn't have made a comedy <laughs> sketch any any like funnier than this. Oh. Like just watching it, you know, this is like something that would happen, in a, you know, <laughs> in a movie or something. But yeah, that was that was. So it mostly survived. It completely survived. Yeah. I actually. And I, I got it in the airplane, and they wouldn't let me set it under my seat, so I took <laughs> off some greebles <laughs> so I could work on the instructions and stuck the boat in the overhead, and you hear it sliding around <laughs> up in there, and it, it survived. <laughs> it's here. <laughs>